Welcome to Monroe Regional Medical Center's nationally recognized and awarded Monroe Heart Program. At Monroe Regional, we provide a patient-centered team approach and you, the patient, are the most important member of the team. This video will help you and your loved ones to better understand what to expect before, during, and after your surgery. Your surgeon has scheduled you for heart surgery. The most common types of surgery are coronary artery bypass, mitral valve repair or replacement, and aortic valve replacement. For bypass surgery, your cardiac surgeon will use the internal mammary artery from your chest wall and the saphenous veins from your legs to bypass the blocked areas in your coronary arteries. This supplies your heart muscle with increased blood flow beyond those blockages. Your care will be individualized to meet your needs and the average time for bypass surgery is two and a half to three hours. Prior to surgery, you will be met with an anesthesiologist who will review your medical history as it pertains to anesthesia. The anesthesiologist will also discuss with you various methods of post-operative pain control and review your medications. You will also be scheduled for pre-operative testing and education. Your pre-operative testing will include blood work, EKG, chest x-ray, urinalysis, and nasal swab to screen for MRSA. MRSA is a type of staph bacteria that people can harbor in their nose without having any ill effects. But if it becomes more active in your body or incision after surgery, it is more difficult to treat. For this reason, we are being proactive in screening for these bacteria. If your nasal screening comes back positive, you will be treated with an antibacterial ointment in your nose for three days. Surgery may be delayed for this treatment. You will receive instruction on how to shower before your surgery using a special antimicrobial cleanser and where to purchase the special cleanser. Showering several times before surgery with the cleanser helps reduce the risk of infection by decreasing the surface bacteria on your skin. First, pour the liquid cleanser directly on your hand rather than a washcloth. Then apply it to your body from your chin down to your toes. Let it stay on your body for two minutes and then rinse off thoroughly. Do not use this cleanser on your face or your hair. For those areas, use your normal soap and shampoo. Do not apply anything to your skin afterwards, such as lotions, powders, colognes, or aftershave products. You will be given an incentive spirometer, also called IS for short. This is a very useful tool to help minimize the risk of pneumonia after surgery. When using the IS, Position yourself in the most upright position possible for optimal chest expansion. To begin, first exhale fully, then immediately place the tube in your mouth and inhale with a slow, deep breath. There are two chambers to observe on your spirometer. The smaller chamber monitors technique. Taking a slow breath will keep your meter within the clear area on your spirometer, which is exactly where we would like it. The larger chamber measures volume. We would like you to inhale as deeply as possible until you reach your maximum breath. A piston will rise in the chamber as you breathe in. Once you have taken your maximum breath, then remove the tube from your mouth and exhale normally. We will mark this volume on your spirometer. This will be your goal after surgery. We will have you demonstrate and practice using your spirometer prior to your surgery so you become familiar with its use. When you come to Monroe for your surgery, we ask that you leave all valuables at home. You will not be allowed to eat or drink anything after midnight, including gum, mints, and water. No makeup, jewelry, or nail polish is to be worn, and do not bring any medications with you to the hospital. You will be given the hospital gowns to wear. Please bring your own toiletries and a pair of non-skid footies. We are often asked about our surgery schedule. The operative schedule is not made out until the evening before surgery. Even if your surgery is not the first one scheduled, you will still be asked to arrive early at the hospital since the surgical schedule can be unpredictable. You may want to bring a book or something that helps relax you until you are taken to the pre-operative holding area, where an IV will be placed, hairs around the surgical site will be clipped, and medications to relax you are given. One person may stay with you in this area until you are taken to the operating room. Your family member will be escorted to the surgical waiting room once you are taken into surgery. After surgery is complete, your surgeon will speak with your family in the surgical waiting room. 
please ask your family members to bring a sweater since the waiting room can be cool. It may be up to two hours after surgery before your family can visit with you. Once visitation is allowed, a nurse will escort your family from the waiting room to your bedside in cardiovascular intensive care. Visitation is limited in the Cardiovascular Intensive Care Unit, or CVICU, to two people at a time. The nurse will guide you on the frequency and duration of visitation. Each visit will usually be 10 to 15 minutes. Cell phones, food or drink, children under the age of 12, and overnight visits are not permitted. Fruit baskets and flowers are not allowed. You will stay in the intensive care unit for a minimum of one night. Your family will need to have your PIN number available when calling the hospital for information regarding your recovery. This number will have been provided to you in advance of surgery. The PIN number is meant to be given to just one person who will serve as the family spokesperson. That spokesperson can then pass that information on to other family and friends. This helps control the privacy of your health information and allows the nurse to remain focused on your bedside care. At the importance of minimizing the risk of infections, we ask that all of our visitors help by utilizing the hand sanitizers located in the hallways and each room. Please use these sanitizers upon entering and leaving during your visitations. Some of the tubing you may have after surgery include an IV in your neck, an arterial line in your wrist to monitor your blood pressure, a Foley catheter that drains your urine, and chest tubes. The chest tubes will collect any drainage and will help with the re-expansion of your lungs. They will be connected to suction, causing them to sound much like rain or popcorn popping. In most cases, you will have a breathing tube that is connected to a ventilator. As you begin to awaken from anesthesia, listen to your nurse as he or she will be working towards getting this tube out as quickly as possible. Your RN will remove the breathing tube when you can breathe well enough without the assistance of the ventilator. Once the tube is removed, you will start using the incentive spirometer as we previously discussed. You will be thirsty after surgery. Your nurse will be able to give you a small amount of ice chips to help with the dryness. Too many ice chips may cause nausea and vomiting. You will start to use your spirometer in the cardiovascular intensive care unit after the breathing tube is removed. We will ask you to take 10 slow, deep breaths every hour, followed by a strong, effective cough. This strong cough will help mobilize secretions in your lungs. Hugging a pillow will help support your incision, minimizing the discomfort. Having a pillow handy when you start using the IS, as it sometimes triggers a cough reflex, will help with your first breath. Practice using your spirometer prior to surgery. On the first day after surgery, most patients will be given breakfast and be prepared to transfer out of CVICU and return back to the cardiovascular unit on the fourth floor. It is important after surgery that you get in and out of your recliner properly. We do not want you to use your hands and push as this would loosen the sternum and potentially cause complications. To sit in your recliner, first touch the chair with the back of your legs. Then as you go to sit down, lean forward. This will help your buttocks to get to the back of the chair. If you're not quite at the back of the chair, you can rock back and forth to get yourself further back. To sit up out of the chair, rock back and forth, keeping your hands on your knees. Then on the count of three, stand up. It is helpful if you practice this preoperatively at home. On your second postoperative day, you will become more awake and aware of what is happening. You'll start walking in the hallway with assistance, and you may be able to shower. You will continue to gain strength each day as you increase your mobility by walking greater distances in the hallways. It is normal to have gained water weight during surgery, causing you to feel swollen, including some swelling in your legs and feet. For this reason, you will be weighed daily and given medications and a diuretic until your weight returns to normal. You can anticipate being discharged around the fourth or fifth post-op day. We want you to be a well-informed and well-educated patient. Please be sure to ask questions and understand all that is being done for you. Before you are discharged, know any new medications, what they are for, and their side effects. There will be no driving post-operatively for several weeks. The sternum is held together by surgical wires, and like any fracture, you don't want to put any extra stress on the bone until healing is complete. We ask that you ride in the back seat with your seatbelt on. This reduces any potential airbag deployment that could injure your sternum. You'll be limited to lifting only to 5 pounds and not doing any activity that has potential to disturb that bone. 
That means no lifting of gallon of milk, heavy pans, vacuuming, or mowing the lawn. Elevate your legs when sitting to decrease the amount of swelling. We will want you to shower daily, take walks, increase your activity as tolerated, use your pain medication as prescribed, and eat healthy. You may even go out to dinner if you feel up to it. We offer you a heart-healthy nutrition class at our Lifetime Fitness Center besides cardiac rehabilitation. Now is a good time to think about your lifestyle and look at ways to make it healthier. You will have an appointment approximately two to three weeks after your operation, at which time your doctor will advise you further. Here at Monroe Heart, you will be in the hands of a very competent cardiovascular team. We all care about helping you and your family through this entire surgical process and hospitalization. Thank you for choosing Monroe Regional Medical Center.